foods that trigger inflammation are the biggest controllable trigger of inflammation in your life because they're often common foods that we eat all the time. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Wangen, the founder and medical director of the IBS Treatment Center. And this episode on inflammation is about how can you determine if a food is triggering inflammation. And there are many types of food reactions and not all of them involve inflammation. So let me give you an example. A lactose intolerance is not an inflammatory food reaction. It's an enzyme deficiency and that deficiency causes you to not be able to break down lactose. Now that can cause gas and bloating and diarrhea and abdominal cramping and pain, but it's not due to inflammation, even though it can feel like it. Now compare this with a dairy allergy, which is inflammatory, and it can also cause gas and bloating and diarrhea and abdominal pain, exactly like a lactose intolerance. However, a dairy allergy can also cause lots of other inflammatory reactions throughout the body. So things like congestion or sinusitis or fatigue or even joint pain. And a lactose intolerance cannot do that because it's not inflammatory. So there's a big difference between these two. They're not just semantics. One is isolated in the digestive tract and the other is systemic. So it can and does the other, the, the allergy does affect your entire body. Now you might say, well, who cares? Really, I just want to solve my problem, right? And I, I tend to agree with that because semantics aren't relevant when you're a patient, you just want to get better, right? You want to know how to get better. And of course, that's how we treat our patients because our primary focus is on whether or not they're getting better, not just whether or not we're telling them something that sounds really fascinating, right? But this series is about inflammatory issues and inflammatory food reactions. So I have to clarify these differences. So how do you know if you have an inflammatory food reaction? Well, it must involve an immune reaction. And how do you figure that out? Well, there are several ways. Now, number one, you can eliminate a food from your diet and see if you feel better. And we'll talk more about each of these. So that's one, that's actually not a bad idea at all. Uh, number two, you can see an allergist. We'll talk about that. And number three, you can have food antibody testing performed. And we'll talk about all three of these. Now, each of these has its strengths and its weaknesses. So let's go to the first one. Doing an elimination diet, doing, you know, eliminating a food from your diet is a great way to figure out if you have a food reaction, but it's a lot easier said than done. Because first, you have to avoid the right food, right? Or the right group of foods, depending on maybe you react to more than one food. And that could be anything. It could be literally anything. It's not just gluten or dairy. It could be any, any food out there. So you have to pick the right one or the right group of foods. Then you have to completely avoid it. 100% avoid it because your immune system's smart. If you're still getting it in something, if it's an ingredient in something and your eyeballs go, well, I don't see it but it's still there, it's still gonna trigger your immune system. So you gotta avoid 100%, you gotta be reading ingredients. And then finally, you have to avoid it long enough to find out if it's gonna actually help you. And that sometimes takes weeks in some instances, but sometimes you'll figure it out within a matter of a few days, but you might have to give it more time. So if you're willing to put in the effort, you can learn a lot about your health and about how you react to foods just by eliminating foods from your diet. It's possible that you can do it. You know, there, I encourage people to even try. Um, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that there isn't a connection because it's challenging. All right, so what was that second option? I said, well, you could go to an allergist. Now you'd think that this would be a great way to sort out inflammatory food reactions. You'd think, right, like an allergist should know everything. But seeing an allergist will only help if you have a classic food allergy reaction. So what I mean by that is I'm talking about a reaction like anaphylaxis, like where your tongue swells up and you can't breathe or you have hives. 
something like that. Allergists define their role by symptoms, not by the underlying cause. They don't address all kinds of inflammatory food reactions. They only address very specific ones that cause very specific symptoms. So what I mean by this is that they, they deal with anaphylaxis, they deal with hives, they deal with eczema, and some other skin, skin like skin rashes. Allergic rhinitis, right? That's runny nose, itchy eyes, and asthma. That's basically it. That's what an allergist does. That's their specialty. And they generally only focus on IgE types of antibody reactions. And we don't have time to get into all these different kinds of fancy antibody issues, but that's only one of many types of food reactions. So then there's the third option. Now the third option for identifying inflammatory food reactions is to test for them in a broader sense. So that means when your immune system is reacting to a food, it's usually producing antibodies against that food. And that's super helpful because you can have very broad food antibody testing. You can have that performed and that, that can, then way broader than you can get at your allergist. As like we said, allergists only look at a really narrow part, really small fraction of the immune system and only a handful of symptoms. Now, there are many other parts of the immune system that lead to inflammation. And these include things like IgG antibodies and IgA antibodies. And it's not normal to produce antibodies to food. So you can get testing for these, but getting testing and the proper guidance on what to do with these results is a lot easier said than done, but the right doctor can help you with this. Now, if you'd like to hear more about that, let me know in the, the comments below. Um, once you've got the food narrowed down, then you can focus on avoiding it. And that's critical, right? Because you want to do this because the last thing you want to do is be ingesting foods that are triggering your immune system to generate inflammation. Because the less inflammation you have in your body, the better, because as we've talked about earlier in this series, inflammation is at the root of nearly all disease. And foods that trigger inflammation are the biggest controllable trigger of inflammation in your life because they're often common foods that we eat all the time. So they're triggering inflammation in us every day and then they wreak havoc with our health. So I strongly encourage you to figure out what, if any foods, are triggering inflammation in your body because I am completely convinced that the lifelong consequences of not doing so have a profound negative impact on our health. And I'm equally convinced that avoiding these foods is not only going to immediately help with your health, but it's gonna drastically lower your risk for developing chronic diseases as you get older, regardless of your age. And it's gonna make you much healthier, not only today, but every day here on out. You'll be healthier not only because you won't be triggering inflammation, you know, be triggering your immune system and create inflammation, you'll also be saving your immune system from spending energy on your food because that energy would be better spent focused on all the other things that your immune system needs to do to protect you from things like bacteria and viruses. And it can't do that as well when it's spending less time attacking your food. Now, if you liked this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching my series on inflammation. And if you'd like to hear about other related topics, just let me know in the comments below because I would love to know and we'll be happy to do it. Thanks again.